So in this lecture, we continue with the introduction to linear algebra. So uh, the next definition that we want to talk about is orthogonal matrices. So let's start with the definition of orthogonal vectors. Two vectors, x and y, which are n-dimensional, are orthogonal if x transpose y is equal to 0. So uh, now uh, we want to define the normalized vector vector x, which is again n-dimensional, is normalized if norm 2 of x is equal to 1. So now we want to define the S-square matrix U, which is n by n, This matrix is orthogonal if all its columns are orthogonal to each other and are normalized. In this case, we refer to the columns. Columns are orthonormal. So in order for a square matrix U to be orthogonal, all of its columns, all of its columns should be orthogonal. What does that mean? That means if x is one of the columns and y is the another is another column x transpose y should be equal to zero and also there should be normalized what does that mean norm two should be equal to one so in this case what happens is u transpose u is equal to identity matrix is equal to u U transpose. So this happens for orthogonal matrix. It also has another meaning. Another meaning for orthogonal matrix, U transpose is equal to U inverse. So this is a very important feature for orthogonal matrices. All right, before we talk about uh, the properties, uh, you know, the features that these orthogonal matrices have, let's review it one more time. Orthogonal matrix should be a square matrix. Its transpose is equal to its inverse, and all of its columns should be orthogonal to each other. And in this case, we call the columns orthonormal, and each of the columns should be also normalized. Now the question is, what if uh, U is not a square. Let's say U is M by N, where M is not equal to N. And N is less than N. In this case, if columns of U are still orthonormal, what will happen? is U, U transpose U is equal to the identity matrix. But uh, we cannot necessarily conclude that U, U transpose is equal to identity matrix. So for now, we generally define orthogonal matrices, orthogonal for a square matrices. So when we talk about a matrix being orthogonal, we refer to a square matrices. Uh, another important property, property of orthogonal matrices 
uh, then uh, we apply them to a, uh, to a vector, what happens, they don't change the Euclidean norm. So Euclidean norm for orthogonal matrix U multiplied by vector X is equal to Euclidean norm of vector X. So U in this case is the orthogonal matrix and X is a vector. So the Euclidean norm is not affected. Orthogonal matrix does not change Euclidean norm of vector X. Uh, the next uh, important definition that we want to talk about is determinant. We we'll start with the definition. The determinant of the S-square matrix A, let's say in N by N space, is a function. We show that function with that from N by N space to scalars to real values and is denoted by determinant of A or that A. So algebraically, we can have an explicit formula for the determinant of uh, matrix A, but uh, there are some intuition behind the determinant. So what we are going to talk about in this course uh, is using determinant as a tool. So we are not going to dive deep into the details of determinant, rather we just explain what's, how to find determinant for some matrices. And then if you want to use it for your course project, you simply can use some of the commands in Python or MATLAB to find determinant. So uh, here is, uh, we want to talk about a recursive definition for determinant, but before doing that, let's define matrix A. to be an n by n matrix and then define this one is in the n minus one by n minus one vector. Uh, we call this a matrix that results from deleting row I and column J of A. So here's the recursive definition. Recursive formula to find determinant. All right, so what's that uh, formula? Determinant of A is sigma j from one to n minus one to power i plus j a i j determinant of when you remove i's row and j's columns of matrix A for all for any i from one to n. So this is the recursive definition. This is generic. This is for any square matrix with any dimension. So 
uh, let's try to use this for uh, one by one metrics for the one initial case one by one metrics a is in real one by one in this case determinant of a is going to be a one one we can also show this by determinant of a one ones because our matrix has only one element in the case of two by two matrix, determinant of A11, A12, A21, and A22 is equal to A11, A22 minus A12, A21. And third, for the three by three matrix, we have determinant of a11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33 is equal to A11 multiplied by determinant of this part, which is A22, A23, A32, A33 minus A12 multiplied by determinant of A21, A23, A31, A33. Where did I bring this matrix? It's when you remove this and this, you will only have these four elements left. Plus A13 multiplied by A21, A22. A31, A32, which is this part. When you remove the row and column corresponding to A13, this is what remains. And then you know how to find the determinant for two by two matrix from the previous part. So these are just examples to give you an idea about the matrix determinant. But as I mentioned, for this course, you can simply uh, find the matrix determinant using, using any uh, programming language. So uh, we define uh, adjoint of matrix, adjoint of matrix A as adjoint A, which is in n by n, is an n by n matrix. Uh -huh. So element ij of this adjoint is minus one to power i plus j multiplied by the case when you remove j's row and i's column. All right, so it could be uh, shown for any non-singular, for any non-singular matrix A, which is in n by n, a inverse is equal to adjoint A, one over determinant of A. So this is the how determinant can help us determine to find inverse of matrix A. This is an explicit uh, formula for inverse of this matrix. Uh, the next definition is eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Again, something that I want to emphasize here is I'm only providing the basic definitions. If you want to do further study, you have to refer to the reference that I uh, mentioned at the end of uh, this uh, series of lectures for introduction to linear algebra or read some of the fundamental books on this. So, given uh, a square matrix A, which is n by n, we say that lambda is an eigenvalue of A. So lambda is a scalar and X 
which is an n-dimensional vector, is the corresponding eigenvector. So when do we say that? If ax is equal to lambda x. So this is the basic definition for eigenvalue and eigenvector. So uh, we can uh, somehow play with this equation. How? So ax minus lambda x. Let's do it this way. So uh, I say lambda x minus ax is equal to zero. Then instead of lambda x, we can uh, simply say lambda identity matrix x minus ax is equal to zero because ix is equal to x. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to factor x from the right side. So it will be lambda i minus a multiplied by vector x is equal to zero and x is non-zero. All right, so this only has a this only has a non-zero solution, only has non-zero solution in the case if lambda i minus a is singular. What does that mean? Determinant of lambda i minus a should be equal to zero. So simply we can use this to determine the values for lambda because in this equation, A is known, I is identity matrix, lambda or the vector for eigenvalues is not known. So this is one way to determine the value for eigenvalues. And based on that, we uh, substitute lambdas here and we can find eigenvalue, eigenvector. Eigen vectors x. So let me summarize it here one more time. Step one, lambda i minus a is equal to zero. So you find the values of lambdas or eigen values. Step two, you have lambdas or known. Then you say ax is lambda x. In this equation, only x is unknown. So you can determine the values of x or eigen vectors. All right, now we are going to talk about some properties. Properties of eigen values and eigenvectors. All right. So in all of these examples, A is an n by n matrix and eigenvalues of A are lambda one to lambda n eigenvectors or x1 to xn. All right, so property one. The trace of A is equal to sum of its eigenvalues. This is a very interesting property. So it tells us trace of matrix A is equal to sum of all of the eigenvalues for this matrix. The second property, determinant of matrix A is equal to product of, product of its eigenvalues. What does this mean? Determinant of A is product of I from one to N lambda I or lambda one multiplied by lambda two by lambda N. And this one lambda one plus lambda two plus lambda N. The next property, uh, 
rank of matrix A is equal to number of non-zero eigenvalues of A. All right, let's say you have a 20 by 20 matrix and you find all of its eigenvalues. And so only five lambdas are non-zero. So without checking the rank of matrix A, you can say rank of A in this example is five. Fourth property. If matrix A is non-singular, which means it's full rank, then one over lambda I is an eigenvalue of A inverse with associated eigenvector of Xi. So what does this mean? It means A inverse multiplied by Xi is equal to one over lambda i x i. So uh, let's say we want to prove this. We start from definition of uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors for elements i, and then we multiply this uh, by a minus from the left side. So what happens? Uh, we are going to have a minus a x i is equal to lambda i a minus x i. A minus multiplied by a is identity matrix based on the definition of based on the definition of uh, inverse. And at this side we have lambda i a inverse x i. Now we divide both sides by lambda i. So we have one over lambda i, x i is equal to a inverse x i. And the proof is complete. Uh, the next property, is eigenvalues of diagonal matrix D, which is diag D1 to Dn are the diagonal interims. So in order to find this, uh, so lambda one is equal to D1, lambda two is equal to D2, and lambda n is equal to Dn, if you have a diagonal matrix. And another uh, notation that I want to introduce here is writing, so we had AX is equal to lambda X. In this case, lambda was one eigenvalue, so it's a scalar here, and X is a vector. What we can do, we can have a compact form. What's that compact form? X, vector X is equal to x1, x2, x3, xn. So this is matrix of all eigenvectors. We also can merge all of the eigenvalues as a diagonal matrix. A matrix that has lambda 1, lambda 2 on its diagonal uh, elements and the rest are zero. So we can represent this in the compact form of A multiplied by vector of eigen uh, vectors, uh, matrix of eigenvectors is matrix of eigenvectors multiplied by this diagonal matrix that has all lambdas on its diagonal.
All right. So if uh, now, given this, we want to conclude another interesting fact. So if all eigenvectors of A are linearly independent, then what we can conclude. So uh, we are saying if all of these columns are linearly independent. Based on our previous discussion, this means X is invertible. And what we are going to do, we are going to multiply both sides of this. So we start from this equation and multiply it by X inverse from the right side. So what we have is a x x inverse is equal to x diagonal vector of eigenvalues x inverse. This is nothing but identity matrix. So we will have x is a is equal to x diagonal eigenvalue matrix a x a inverse. All right. In this case, if we can write the matrix in this form, A is called a diagonalizable matrix. Because we somehow were able to diagonalize A uh, using its eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So in this lecture, we talked about orthogonal matrices. So what was the main idea? U, U transpose equal to U transpose U equal to I, which means U transpose and U inverse are equal. Then we talked about determinant. And we showed the determinant for some examples, one by one, two by two, and three by three uh, matrices. After that, uh, we talked about the fundamental definitions of eigenvalues. And eigenvectors. And finally, we talked about the compact form for representing eigenvalues and eigenvectors where x equal to x1, x2, xn, eigenvectors. And this is equal to a diagonal matrix that has lambdas on as its diagonal element.